Welcome to Capital Baptist Church, and welcome to our message today as we talk about uh, the idea of plug in to Jesus. That's right, the topic today is plug in to Jesus. And this is the opening message of a series we're going to be doing called Power Up. And today as we talk about powering up, the first and foremost thing we got to do uh, is we got to plug in uh, to Jesus. Before we look at that, I want to ask you to think about your life today. And I want to ask you a question. Do you feel uh, drained today? Uh, do you feel depleted? Uh, do you feel like you're running uh, on a lower uh, frequency, if you will? Uh, listen, it's a good chance you feel that way, right? I mean, all of us uh, feel that way uh, from time to time, but particularly uh, in this last uh, year or two, uh, things have been so, so hard. And so I want to do a series today where we learn how to increase God's power in our lives. As we think about the, the resurrection of Jesus and the, and the resurrection power uh, of Jesus, uh, you know, he wants to help us. He wants to give us uh, power. In fact, in Isaiah 40, uh, 29, and this is going to be what we call the key verse uh, for the series, it says this, he gives power to the weak and to those who have no might, he increases strength. So when I look at that verse, I kind of think about, you know, God's job description, okay? You know, this is a verse that tells us uh, some of the things that God uh, can and will do uh, for us. And it says, number one, he gives power. God, God gives power. He's a, he's a source of power. And then also, he increases strength. If we are drained, if we are depleted, if we are running uh, low, I mean, he uh, increases uh, strength. And so that right now there's so many things in our lives, so many things happening, and, and many times people uh, in our lives can, can really uh, you know, cause us to lose power. And so I want to encourage you, I want to help you uh, in this area. Now to do this, we're going to do a deep dive into Luke 24, 11 through 53. So I want you to note that passage. Let me say it again. Luke 24, 11 through 53. And what this is, this is going to be an expository teaching series, okay, where we're literally going to go verse by verse. We're going to spend five uh, weeks in this one passage, dissecting it. And here's the deal. What we're going to see is this. We're going to see a case study of how Jesus powered up the disciples and took them from, listen to this, Luke 24, 17. It says they were sad. They, they, they were sad. They, they, they were running low. They, they, they were sad. They, they, you know, their, their leader, their hero, uh, their mentor, their teacher, uh, Jesus has, has been crucified. And, and, they, and they don't even believe that he's resurrected from the grave. And, and they're, they're really, really sad. But then listen, as, as they walk through this process of, of Jesus powering them up, you come to Luke 24, 52. Now listen to this. It says they had great joy. They had great joy. So I'll be honest with you. For years, I wanted to do a deep dive in this passage and, and really kind of understand, I mean, what did Jesus do uh, to take them from sad to great joy, from being sad to great joy. And guess what? Now is the time we're going to do this, okay? Uh, this is finally coming off of my uh, to-do list, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about five different chargers that Jesus used to power up the disciples. And how, listen, this is the best part, how, listen, he can do the same for you. And so first and foremost, what we have to do, and, and I'm going to be using terminology of a, of a cell phone, okay? So I think pretty much all of us uh, should be familiar with a, with a cell phone. And so, uh, you know, the terminology I'm going to use, the titles kind of express that. Uh, and we all know, you know, what it's like to have to charge up a phone, right? I mean, it's something that, you know, we do uh, at least once a day. And, and uh, you know, some of us have to do it more than once a day or whatever, okay? And so the first thing you got to do is you got you to plug it in, right? Okay, you got you to plug it into a power source. And so our power source is Jesus. We have, we have to plug in to Jesus. If we want to move from being sad to great joy, we have to plug in to Jesus. And so our key verse is Luke 24, 15. 
And uh, here's what it says, our key verse for the message. It says, so it was while they conversed and reasoned that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. I I just love this phrase here. Jesus himself drew near and went with them. Jesus wants to draw near to you. Jesus, listen, he wants to go with you in your life, all right? But you have to be willing to plug in to Jesus. Now, as we look at this passage, Luke 24, 11 through 27, there's a couple of things I want to point out about it. Number one, it's what I'm calling scene one. So as we move through these five different uh, chargers, if you will, that Jesus used to move the disciples uh, from being sad to great joy, uh, there's like different scenes, different places where, where things happen, okay? And so every week I'm going to tell you which scene it is and where they're at, okay? And this scene takes place on what's called the road uh, to Emmaus, the road to Emmaus. And, uh, and it was, and this, really it's like a village, okay? It wasn't like a really big area or whatever. But it was seven, it was a seven mile walk from Jerusalem to Emmaus, all right? So they're walking down this road, all right, and, 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 and they're on this road, and they got a seven-mile journey. They, they've been in Jerusalem, uh, but part of their sadness is that they're discouraged, and they're leaving Jerusalem, okay? And uh, later on, we're going to see how that after Jesus gets them charged up some, they return back to Jerusalem, where they should have been uh, all uh, along, okay? Uh, Luke 24, 13 says, Now behold, two of them were traveling that same day, to a village called Emmaus, which was, uh, listen, seven miles from Jerusalem. So the Bible tells us exactly what I just said, okay? The road is the road to Emmaus, and it's a seven-mile walk from Jerusalem to Emmaus. Now, in this situation, Jesus is going to talk to two disciples, all right? And these two disciples weren't really part of the what we call the, the 12 disciples, or which became 11 disciples or whatever, okay? Uh, these are two, when I say the word disciple, I mean they're followers of Jesus, okay? But they're not part of that inner core uh, of uh, disciples. And what's interesting to me is the Bible only gives the name of one of them, all right? And that name is Cleopas, Cleopas. And I find that interesting in the sense that, you know, maybe what God was trying to show us is that, you know, like, you know, this is the silent uh, disciple. We never know that disciple's name. And maybe, you know, in my mind, maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong. But what it speaks to me is like, you know, God had one of them nameless uh, because we can put our name there in the sense that, that we're like that disciple too, okay? We, 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 we need to plug in uh, to Jesus, all right? But the name is given in Luke twenty four eighteen that one of them is Cleopas. It says, Then the one whose name was Cleopas answered and said to him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? And have you not known the things which happened there in these days? So there it is. We discover the name because the Bible names that disciple Cleopas, Cleopas. But again, the other one is unnamed. And maybe when we get to heaven, uh, we'll know that name. So how do we get plugged in to Jesus? Sorry, what, what, what does it take uh, for us to uh, have Jesus himself draw near and go with us in our lives? Well, first of all, you got to know why to plug into Jesus. Uh, and, and everything I'm going to say today is going to come right out of this passage, okay? Uh, in fact, there's only like one passage I'm going to be using today outside of this exact passage, okay? Uh, because we are doing like an expository verse by verse through this passage. And the Bible is clear here. It tells us, you know, know why. Why should you plug into Jesus? Number one, to overcome doubt. To overcome doubt. You see... These disciples doubted. They, they doubted the resurrection. In fact, in Luke 24, 11, it says, and their words seemed to them like idle tales, and they did not believe them. I mean, the women testified, you know, that, that Jesus was alive, okay? And they testified to the grave being emptied, and they testified to the angels telling them, you know, that Jesus is not uh, there, but they did not believe, okay? They did not believe. They, they, were, they were struggling with doubt. 
And maybe you're struggling with some doubt. You know that you know, Satan, he loves to put question marks where God puts periods. Let me say that again. Satan, he just loves it. This is part of what we call spiritual warfare. He likes to put doubt. He likes to put question marks where God puts periods. And you need to plug up so that you can replace that doubt uh, with faith. And then secondly, to overcome darkness. They, they were spiritually dark at this point in time. Uh, Luke 24, 16 says, But their eyes were restrained so that they did not know him. Listen, they, they, they are spiritually in darkness right now. Okay? They, they, have, they have Jesus standing right in front of them on the road to Emmaus. Uh, and, and this is one of what we call the post-resurrection appearances of Jesus. All right? Where after, between the time he resurrected from the grave and, and his ascension back up into heaven, he made many uh, uh, you know, what we call post-resurrection appearances. This is one of them. And, but they don't see him. They, they, don't, they don't even know it's him, okay? <laughs> I mean, they're, they're in darkness. And maybe you're in darkness today spiritually. And listen, you need to charge up. And then thirdly, to overcome discouragement. I mean, they're discouraged, all right? Uh, like I said, even the indication that they are leaving Jerusalem, okay, which is where they should be, and they're going to uh, Emmaus. I mean, th- this is all part of their discouragement. It says, uh, listen, and, and I love this, Jesus starts talking with them, okay? Even they don't know who, who he is, they're telling about, oh, yeah, you, you must not have heard about you know, Jesus dying or whatever. And, and listen to what Jesus says, Luke 24, 21. But we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, beside all this, today is the third day since these things happened. And I want to focus on that statement, we were hoping. We were hoping. Boy, that is a powerful statement. We were hoping. You know, my, many times our discouragement is based on we were hoping, okay? <laughs> we, were, we were hoping. And, and, and they're saying, we, you know, we were hoping that, that you know, he, he, he was going to, you know, uh, redeem Israel. And, and they, they were viewing Jesus kind of like as a, a political savior, if you will, not a, not a spiritual savior. And they, they were hoping for that, you know. But, but now he's dead. Now, now he's gone. What have you been hoping for? Are you struggling with some discouragement right now? You know, it's easy to get down when you're hoping for something and it doesn't happen. I mean, we all can relate to that. I can relate to that. And, and listen, we need to plug into Jesus during those times. And then also to overcome death. So I mentioned that one thing that we're going to deviate from here a little bit is, is we want to focus on the fact that, that part of plugging into Jesus is to, to overcome death. This is what Easter is all about. This is what the resurrection is all about. Overcoming death. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. You see, the Bible tells us that we've all sinned against God. What does that mean? That means we've, we've broken His laws. You know, God has given commandments. God's giving laws for us to follow. You know, uh, He tells us, don't lie. But, you know, pretty much all of us have at some point lied, right? And if we say we haven't lied, we're probably lying or whatever. We, you know, that's just one of many, many illustrations. The point I'm trying to make is, you know, we have sinned. Okay? We, we, we have broken God's laws. And the Bible says in Romans 6, 23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. What do we deserve because of our sin? It says the wages of sin is death. And that's not, that's not just talking about physical death. No, it's much more than that. It's talking about spiritual death. And spiritual death in the Bible is defined as hell, as hell. What we deserve, okay? Because God is holy. God is perfect. You know, we're not, you know. And we, and we, don't, and we really don't deserve heaven. We deserve hell because of our sin. But the good news is the gift of God. Praise the Lord. It's a gift. We can't earn it. We can't work for it. That gift is eternal life. We can, we can have a forever relationship in heaven, and it comes through Christ Jesus, our Lord. We've got to plug into Jesus to be saved. So listen, how to plug into Jesus? Know why to plug into Jesus. To overcome doubt, to overcome darkness, to overcome discouragement, and to overcome death. 
Number two, be saved and plug into Jesus. Listen, plugging into Jesus, first and foremost, is to be saved. Okay, to be saved, to be saved means to have a a relationship with him as your Lord and Savior. And saved means you're saved from hell, okay? Saved from hell, and listen, you go to heaven when you die. Praise the Lord. So as you think about this, being saved, number one, realize you will never have to walk alone. You know, it's wonderful, okay, being a Christian. And, and you know, but praise God, you know, we don't have to go to hell, okay? That's awesome, okay? But, but also, now I wouldn't say better, but also, listen, also we get the benefit of having him with us here in this life, okay? It, we get uh, the benefit of Luke 24, 15. So it was while they conversed and reasoned that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. Praise the Lord, our key verse. You don't have to walk alone, okay? When you're saved, Jesus himself will draw near to you, and Jesus will go with you in your life, all right? You you know, some of you today, you're so lonely, okay? You're so lonely. You need to be saved, and you need to give your life to Jesus. And then also, you don't have to have all the answers, okay? You don't have to, you know, Jesus can, listen, he can handle your questions, okay? You don't have to know everything, okay? You don't have to know everything about the Bible. You don't have to know everything about anything, okay? Uh, you just got to know the gospel. You got to know what I'm sharing with you today. Luke 24, 17 says, He said to them, What kind of conversation is this that you have with another as you walk and are sad? Jesus comes up to them. I mean, they don't believe, you know. <laughs> they're experiencing doubt. They're experiencing darkness. They're experiencing discouragement. He comes to them, okay? And they don't have all the answers, okay? But he still loves them and cares about them and wants them in relationship with them. And then also Jesus will open the scriptures to you. When you plug into Jesus, he'll open the scriptures to you. Luke 24, 25 through 27 says, Then he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning, I love this, beginning at Moses and all the prophets, I love this, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. I love this. He opened the scriptures to them. And listen, if you'll, if you'll plug into Jesus, okay, he will do the same for you. He, he will help you to grow. He will help you to learn uh, God's uh, word. He will expound to you the scriptures, okay? And then listen, ask Jesus to save you today. This is the bottom line of our message today. As we talk about powering up, you know, what we're going to talk about are four different chargers that, that they used, that Jesus used, I should say, to help them charge up, okay, to move from being sad to being full of great joy, okay? But listen, it begins with you got to plug in, okay? You got you to plug in uh, to Jesus. That means you got to be saved. You see, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel. And let me tell you something, I'm declaring to you the gospel, and gospel means good news. That's what's so exciting about Easter, okay? It's good news, and that good news is that you can be saved. It's through the gospel you are saved. This is how you get uh, out of hell, so to speak, how you, how you keep from going to hell, I should say. He says, for I delivered you, first of all, that which I also received. And here's the good news. Christ died for our sins. Praise the Lord. Christ died for our sins so that we wouldn't have to die and go to hell, according to the scriptures. And that he was buried. He died. He was buried. And listen to this. He rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Jesus is alive. And what you have to be willing to do is believe the gospel. Believe in the death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Have you done that? Have you plugged into Jesus? I thank God that I made that decision as a a 10-year-old boy to, to plug into Jesus and to be saved. And listen, if you haven't done that, why don't you do it today, okay? Why don't you do it today? Why don't you ask him to save you today? In fact, why don't why don't we bow our heads and close our eyes right now? 
And I, and I just want to, I'll give you an opportunity right now to be saved. And if you are saved already, you pray a prayer of thankfulness, okay? That you're saved, thankful for the resurrection of Jesus. But if you're not sure you're saved and you want to be sure, pray, pray right now. Just bow your head and close your eyes and pray something like this. Just say this from your heart to God's heart. Dear God, I am a sinner in need of a savior. I believe that Jesus died for me. I believe that Jesus rose from the grave to give me eternal life. Right now, I turn from my sin and I put my trust in Jesus to save me. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and save me right now. Thank you for saving me today. Amen. Amen. You know what? If you prayed that, he answered it. Let me know. Tell me you made that decision. Email me at wecare at capitalbaptist.org. Let me know. I want to hear from you. If you made that decision today, email me. Wecare at capitalbaptist.org. So how to plug into Jesus? Know why to plug into Jesus. Be saved to plug into Jesus. And then lastly, increase power after you plug into Jesus. And so as we close today, I just want to tell you what's ahead, okay? So they're going to move from sad to great joy, all right? And they plug into Jesus, but then there's four different, what I'm calling chargers, that Jesus uses to increase their power. And let me just quickly go over these as we close today. Number one, charge up with prayer. The Bible says in Luke 24, 30, Now it came to pass as he sat at the table with them that he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. So he blessed, he prayed with them, okay? And with every one of these, there's going to be what I call a, a, a power charge. And with prayer, I'm going to have the power charge be this. Pray the model prayer each day, okay? That's Matthew 6, 9 through 11. I'm sorry, 9 through 13. Let me say that again. Matthew 6, 9 through 13, all right? So I'm going to encourage you over these next weeks, okay, during this series in particular, to pray that each day, uh, what I call the model prayer. Secondly, charge up with the Bible. Luke 24, 45. It says, He opened their understanding that they might comprehend the Scriptures. He helped them to, as we said, comprehend the Scriptures. And the challenge or the charge is going to be, the Bible power charge is going to be to complete the weekly growth guide. So we put together what's called the growth guide. The growth guide goes with the sermon. I'm going to encourage you to complete every one of them during this series. And then thirdly, charge up with witnessing. In Luke 24, uh, 48, he told them, and you are witnesses of these things. Your witnesses, one of the ways he charges us up is he gives us a a, a purpose, if you will. He gives us a mission, and that is to be a witness for him. And listen, the witness power charge is going to be to share the gospel with one person each week. Share the gospel with one person each week. And then lastly, charge up with worship. Charge up with worship. In Luke 24, 52, It says, and they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. I love that. They worshiped him. They worshiped him. Let us worship our Lord. And listen, the worship power charge is going to be attend all of these services, okay, in this series. So you got the first one down today, but there's four more. And I'm going, to, I'm going to challenge you to either on-site or online, make sure you are part of every one of these worship services. Listen, there's so much in our world today, so much happening, so many different people or whatever that can just really drain us, okay? But God wants to increase us with power, and we need his power. So the question is, do you need to power up with Jesus. Again, Isaiah 40, 29, he gives power to the weak and to those who have no might, he increases strength.